Hi parents, soon to be parents and all guardians. Welcome to Life with Little Ones channel. And in my today's video, I will share about 10 things you must do and don't when your child has fever. If your child has fever, you have to watch this video before you give your child medication. What are the 10 things you must do and don't when your child has a fever? If you are a parent, it's a scene that's all too familiar. You put your hand on your sick child's forehead and it feels warm. Then the thermometer confirms your suspicion. They've got a fever. But if you follow some simple rules, you'll make them more comfortable and keep them safe. When your child suffers from fever, you suffer emotionally and physically too. I've been there. But remember, Fever is the body's own way of fighting infections. If your little one is suffering from fever, don't stress. A fever is a viral infection that settles on its own most of the time. That doesn't mean your child doesn't need the care and attention. Here are a few things you should do and don't when your little one has a high temperature. Number 1. Do not be eager to give antibiotics. Most of the time, children even with a very high grade fever of 101, 102, 103 Fahrenheit don't need antibiotics. Treating a fever with a simple paracetamol syrup will do the job, after consulting your doctor of course. Remember, antibiotics are only given when the doctor suspects a bacterial infection causing the fever. Never give your child aspirin. It can cause a serious condition called Dreyer's syndrome and avoid combination cold and flu remedies in your kids. They shouldn't be used in the children under age of 4. In older kids, it's unclear how well they work. The possible side effects can be serious and even life-threatening. Number 2. There's a lot you can do to make your little ones feel better. Put a cool compress on their head and keep their room at a moderate temperature, not too hot and not too cold. Dress them in one layer of light clothing and offer a light blanket. You can also cool them off with a lukewarm sponge bath. You can repeat this as when the temperature rises. Don't use any icy cold bath or rub your child's skin with alcohol. Either can actually drive up a fever. And even if your child chills, don't bundle them up with the thick blankets or clothes. Number 3. If your child suffers from vomiting and diarrhea, avoid force feeding. Instead, replenish with lots of fluid and water. Offer electrolyte drinks, homemade electrolyte solution with sugar and salt, fruit juices, or just plain water to prevent dehydration. Number 4. Avoid giving liquids or any food to your child just after she vomits. You have to wait at least 30 minutes before offering food or juices. Number 5. Keep a tab on urination. If your child has not urinated for 5 or 6 hours, this can be a sign of dehydration. The next step in such a scenario is to put the child on intravenous infusion or IV. Number 6. Maintain good hand hygiene. This is to ensure that you keep infection at their minimum. Washing hands or using sanitizer before and after meals is very important. Number 7. Always eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Fruits, homemade fruit juices, home-cooked foods are the best option to help a child's immunity get better. Number 8. Look for other symptoms. If your child's fever does not reduce beyond 3 days and she suffers from loose motion and vomiting 5 to 6 times a day, you probably need to take some other course of action that only pediatrician can guide you about. A blood test or a urine test in such a case become necessary. Number 9. Stay patient. This is easier said than done. 
but as a parent, your cool and calm temperament can go a long way in helping your little one counter and recover from the illness. Number 10. Make sure your child gets plenty of rest. Staying in bed all day is not necessary, but a sick child should take it easy. It's best to keep a child with fever home from school or childcare. Most doctors feel that it is safe to return in school when the temperature has been normal for 24 hours. Maybe you're asking, when should you call a doctor? Usually, you don't need to take your sick child to the doctor, but sometimes fever can be a serious warning sign. Call your pediatrician if your child has temperature of 104 Fahrenheit or higher. It is under 3 months old and has a temperature of 100.4 or higher has a fever that lasts for more than 72 hours or more than 24 hours if your child is under age 2, has a fever along with other symptoms such as stiff neck, extremely sore throat, ear pain, rash, or severe headache, your child has a seizure, your child seems very sick, upset, or unresponsive. Tips how to take your child's temperature. How often do you need to check? That depends on the situation. Ask your pediatrician. Usually, you don't need to take your child's temperature obsessively or wake them up if they are sleeping peacefully. But, you should do it if their energy seems very low or if your child has a history of seizures with fever. Which thermometer is best for kids? Digital ones are best. They can be used in their mouth rectally or under the arm. For young children, a rectal temperature is most accurate. If your kids are aged 4 to 5 or older, you can probably get a good reading with a thermometer in the mouth. Under the arm is less reliable, but it is easier to do. Remember to add a degree to an underarm reading to get a more accurate number. Thank you for watching and Please like, share, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon to get a new video updates. I hope you learned from this video, and if you are parents watching this video, please comment below and share how you help your child with fever, and I hope to see you on my next video. Thank you!